Okay, so what's the difference between Spring Boot and Quarkus? Well, for building microservices and cloud native applications, Java is a popular choice. And today we're gonna look at two Java frameworks. We're gonna look at their differences, compare them, and look at them through the angle of performance, developer experience, and ecosystem. So let's go ahead and hop right in and start talking about Spring Boot. So what is Spring Boot? Well, Spring Boot is what's known as a opinionated framework for creating standalone and production ready uh, Spring applications. And what Spring Boot does exceptionally well is it gets rid of a lot of boilerplate code when developing Java applications, and it comes with a vast ecosystem that makes it a go-to for many developers. Now that's Spring Boot, but let's also talk about Quarkus because Quarkus is a newer Java framework, but it takes a different approach. Now Quarkus is made for delivering uh, container optimized and cloud native applications that have a faster boot time and better resource utilization. It also combines both the imperative and reactive programming models and has a lot of tools for developer productivity. Now, where do we even begin with comparing Spring Boot and Quarkus? Well, let's take a look at their different use cases because Spring Boot is generally used to speed up the time to market for working with Java applications. And then Quarkus, on the other hand, is made for optimized cloud-ready images uh, and applications as well. Now, let's go a little bit deeper because both of these can compile applications using both the JVM, which is like running our apps through an interpreter, and natively, which is compiling an application for a specific machine and it has a lot of performance benefits. But speaking of performance, I wanna go one step further and talk about arguably the biggest difference between Spring Boot and Quarkus. So this relies in the differences between build time and runtime. So I'll use a different color to, sh to, to map out Quarkus, but let's start off with Spring Boot and look at the build time. So during the build time, this is the packaging of the application using perhaps a tool like Maven to get the application ready. And then during runtime, different tasks are happening. So we're working with configuration files, we're working with scanning for class paths and initializing components. And this is happening every time that we start our application. And what Quarkus does is it kind of flips this on its head and tries to do as much pre-processing as possible. So this results uh, during the build time and the packaging of our application and all the other tasks. And then when we actually go to run our application, we have what's known as a pre-warmed image that has a faster boot time and better resource utilization. Okay, so that was performance, but now let's take a look at developer experience as it goes hand in hand with the speed and the cost of software development. Now we'll start off with Spring Boot and what it does very well is it abstracts a lot of the complexity of building out a Java application. This is because of things such as its popularity with auto configuration, uh, usage of annotations, things like code constructs. And if you're already familiar with Spring Boot, it can be very fast to get an application up and running. Now Quarkus also brings in some great components in what's known as Quarkus's uh, developer joy. And so what this developer joy really includes is a bunch of different components such as live coding and continual testing integrated by default, the Quarkus developer UI, which is a great way to visualize your dependencies, documentation, things like Swagger, and also the Quarkus CLI for interacting with our projects from the command line. So they both offer their unique advantages when it comes to a development experience. But let's also talk about the ecosystem for both of them. Now, we'll start off with uh, Spring Boot again, which originally was created in 2014 and has since become the de facto standard for building enterprise Java applications. And because of this, it has a quite a large community uh, and documentation and resources for building applications with Spring Boot and debugging. Now, on the other hand, Quarkus was created in 2019 and has been rising in popularity ever since. This is partially due to the popularization of Kubernetes as a container orchestration system, and because of its extensibility with over 800 different extensions that you can use for your projects. Okay, so we've taken a look at these different perspectives. How do you really pick which one to use for your project? Well, let's start off with Quarkus, because if you're working with serverless or containerized applications with minimal resource consumption, Quarkus is probably gonna be your best bet. Quarkus has a highly active community, a lot of up-to-date and comprehensive documentation, and growing support from a lot of leading tech companies who have adopted Quarkus. Now, if you're looking for a mature framework with a vast ecosystem, then Spring Boot will probably be your best bet. Spring Boot is well known, it's very well adopted, and it's a complete and universal solution for any task right out of the box. But listen, both of these frameworks have their advantages. 
It's all about picking the right tool for your specific needs. And as Java continues to evolve, we're gonna see Spring Boot, Quarkus, and other frameworks continue to innovate and make our lives as developers even easier. Now, I highly recommend that you go to the quick starts for Spring Boot and Quarkus to get started with a project on your system and figure out which one is right for you. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to like it if you've gotten some type of value out of it and feel free to subscribe to the channel.